and welcome to Can Do, Can Say, the horse training podcast. Today, I want to talk about whether or not your horse is fit to work. And what I want to talk about in particular is horses that have been off work for an injury, for example, and then we bring them back to work. Are we changing our training to compensate for that injury? So do we really know that the horse is ready to do the lesson or are we changing our training to suit the injury? And I'm going to talk about this because this morning I had exactly that problem and I went out. I have a young uh, quarter horse stallion. He's three years old and he's he came to me with you know quite a bad club foot and that has been making him lame on and off and so over the past sort of six months I've been starting to work with him a bit but I've been very aware that he's not been sound so he's also really really quiet (laughs) and he's a lovely character but you know he plods around like a quarter horse does and so it's all seemed sort of very easy for him and for me and you know we all love that it's lovely to have an easy horse but then a few days ago I taught him hips to the fence which he picked up on really quickly and then the next day I went out and I stood on the mounting block and he swung his hips over and I thought oh that's great and I was habituating him to having me above him and all of these things and I thought I won't get on today I'll do that you know next time Anyway, I decided, oh, look, I'll just throw my leg over anyway because he's so quiet and he's standing here. And, of course, he did. He just stood there perfectly calm and nice. And I thought, oh, that's great. You know, this horse is a genius and he's so quiet and he's so calm. So it's great. Three days later, which was this morning, I went out and I tacked him up and I was just doing some give to the bit and some shoulder control on the ground with him. And I was carrying with me my dressage whip that has one of those big flat, round ends on the handle, big flat round end that's, you know, two inches or so across in diameter, a nice soft thing. So what I thought I'd do was just put that on his side, not poke him with it, just place it on his side where my heel would be if I was to touch him with my leg when I was riding. I thought that, that, that'd be a good thing to do. Anyway, the first time I touched him with it, he leapt in the air and went tearing forward, obviously terrified. And he didn't just do that once. He did it several times on each side. To each side, it was equally bad on each side. Now, this is a horse that was dragged around shows as a youngster. So, you know, he's um, he's certainly been touched everywhere. That's not a problem. But it was this unusual feeling for him that was really scary. So I, th- of course, first thing I thought, back to was two days ago when I sat on him. What if my leg had touched him? Yeah, it it can be really dangerous. So what it told me, and it's something that I see a lot, is that I hadn't given this horse the benefit of the education. I'd made assumptions about him and about his level of relaxation and about how quiet he was because he was probably disengaged because I'd been unable to raise his emotional level enough to really engage him properly. So he'd been, you know, plodding around, going through the motions, but he hadn't really been engaged to ever test that out. So, for example, he was wearing a saddle. So really, when I do first saddling, as you'll see in the first saddling module in the training, You know, I go through all these steps of the first saddling that really habituate the horse to not only having the saddle but also having things flapping around on them. And it's a really important part of the first saddling. It's not just sticking the saddle on hoping for the best. You need the horse to actually be able to trot and canter around to get a feel of how that saddle feels and how things feel flapping around him and touching his sides and things like that. I go from there to doing what I call the recycling lesson, which is a great lesson. And there's a couple of those in the training as well, where you put some plastic bottles weighted with things and noise and things like that on the saddle and you long rein the horse with these things. And it's a really excellent lesson when it's properly broken down 
to habituate the horse to the sorts of experiences that my young colt felt today. So I really recommend that. You know, that was entirely my mistake. That horse was not ready for what I was doing because it didn't get those first steps. You know, it's a step-by-step thing. We have to build on a strong foundation. And if those steps have been skipped, then the horse gets surprised by something. So it was entirely my fault. It was a big hole in my training. And the reason was, was because I'd made the assumption that he was just a nice, quiet horse and he wasn't going to object. But just because he's a nice, quiet horse, which I'm absolutely sure he is, does not mean that he doesn't need to be trained. He absolutely needs to be trained. And training, as we know, is all about raising and lowering the emotional level. So he went from, you know, a 55 probably when we were doing give to the bit to an 85 in a second. Um, And I no longer had control of the emotional level. So I need to go back now because he's had that frightening experience. I obviously have to go back and spend, you know, probably quite a bit more time than I would have under normal circumstances had I taken the foundation steps that are required. So another example of this is when you've got a horse that's been off for an injury and the vets advise you certain things that the horse can and can't do. I have a lovely example of when I was in the UK training and somebody rang me up and said, oh, I've got a 17 two-hand dressage horse that I simply cannot hold. You know, it's, um, it's really, really strong. And what I need is for you just to come and teach it not to be so strong. And I said, well, that's fine. You know, that'll be fun. It's my favorite thing to teach. So I arrived there and I explained to the owner that I'm going to teach the horse to give to the bit. Now, what that means is that I'm going to teach the horse that there'll be some pressure, the horse has to move in a certain direction, and the pressure will be released. So I'm going to teach the horse to carry itself so that you don't have to carry it around the dressage arena anymore. I'm just like, oh, yeah, great, okay. So I start on the ground, standing still, and the horse is fine. We had to give to the bit on both sides, standing still. The horse is fine. The horse gets that really easily, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be – a walk in the park until I start walking and the owner says oh no 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 he he can only go straight lines <laughs> I said what and she said oh yes he's had an injury and the vet said that he can only walk in straight lines he's not allowed to do circles I said well I wish you'd told me that because we can't teach give to the bit in a straight line it's a sort of point of give to the bit. So this horse has spent his life with his head and neck straight pulling against the rider's hands and he's been subject to this unrelenting pressure on both reins and that's what he's used to. So what I was doing with give to the bit was actually offsetting his head just a little bit, not too much, to put a little bit of bend in the neck, which prevents him from using his whole skeletal system to pull against me because as soon as he hasn't got his head and neck straight, I'm only really working his neck. I'm not asking the whole horse to give. So... (laughs) I sort of explained this to her and and said, you know, we can only teach this by asking the horse to move in a circle. (laughs) Later, when the horse knows it a bit better and you've got shoulder control, you can actually teach them, you know, teach in straight lines when you've got some shoulder control, but you can't begin the lesson there. It would be like, you know, my, my stallion beginning the lesson with me getting on it when it missed the whole sort of first saddling. So we've got to begin the lesson where the lesson starts, not where the horse is up to physically. So if the horse isn't there physically, then we need to find something else to do with the horse until such a time as the horse is ready to do the lesson. Because with that horse in particular, you know, the dressage horse, so anything you do working that horse in straight lines is only probably going to make his uh, hardness or his stiffness worse. So he's probably just going to teach him to pull more rather than to pull less. So 
wait till the horse is better, wait till you've got a horse that's 100% able to do the lesson that you want to teach. So what could you teach, for example, because we don't want to waste the time. So if we're going to be interacting with the horse, I always think it's great, you know, to have something to be able to teach. So for the dressage horse, I would have taught anything where the horse understands pressure release reward. So any little lesson that starts to teach that pattern. So you could teach give to the bit at standstill. You could teach the horse to put its head down. You could teach the horse to lead or to walk with its head down. All of those things will will help the horse understand it's going to feel a pressure, it's going to have to move something, and then the pressure will be released when it moves the right thing in the right direction, the pressure will be released and the horse will be rewarded using a scratch or your voice or something like that. So it's a sequence of things, pressure, release, reward. And horses learn patterns really well. So what we're trying to teach is just a number of different patterns, and then we string them, all those patterns together. So by teaching the horse any simple little lesson like that involves pressure, release, reward, not only shows the horse that pressure means something and the horse's job is to look for an answer. But it also teaches the horse that that pressure will be released. So if we take that dressage horse as an example, quite often they've been used to unrelenting pressure from the reins or from the bit and from legs you know, I certainly I was told when I was a dressage rider was to hold on to him with a good contact, you know, good contact, whatever that might mean, and wrap your legs around him. And these two things didn't stop until I got off the horse. So the horse has to relearn this. You know, the horse has to learn that actually pressure means something. Pressure is a cue. And we release that cue when you respond correctly. So those are really good things to be able to teach your horse. For my horse with the with the club foot that has been lame on and off that I shouldn't have sat on, um, there are tons of things we can teach there. So you can teach all of the groundwork, so the, the give to the bit and the shoulder control, the hind quarter control. You can If your horse is sound enough, you can start doing some of that at trot as well. But you can teach the um, basics of first saddling, which I did. You know, he had the saddle on. He was wearing the saddle very comfortably. That was fine. But what I hadn't done was I hadn't done that sort of recycling lesson that's in the training. Go along to the training and have a look at that lesson because it's a really important lesson, particularly if you've got a horse that you – haven't yet started or your horse is a little bit cold back, as they say. Cold back just means it doesn't understand the saddle. So that lesson really helps. But I couldn't teach that because I couldn't get him to move at speed. So those are great things that you can teach, but wait until your horse is ready to learn the lesson that you want to teach. So the lesson from today is really don't make the mistake of thinking disengagement is relaxation, quietness, or, and most importantly, understanding. So if your horse looks really relaxed and quiet and you therefore assume that it understands it, it might be that you've never really raised the emotional level enough to get the horse engaged with you. So the horse might just be disengaged. Um which is what I learned this morning with my horse. So the take home here really is to give your horse, whatever its history, the benefit of education. I don't I can't stress it enough. These foundation blocks that we build, everything comes from that. And if you don't have that foundation, don't worry, you can go back and build it later. You, you absolutely can. But if there's a hole missing in that foundation, you're going to find it later in the training. So if you found a hole in your horse's training, then work out what that is, what that is, what's the foundation lesson that's missing with this horse 
that means it's reacting in this way. I had another good one this morning. Somebody sent me a, a note on Facebook and said um, that they'd watched the trailer loading video and that, that was great. He said, but that's not my problem because the horse gets on the trailer, but he rushes out backwards before I get a chance to close it up. And so obviously this horse had always got on the trailer fine, but he'd also always rushed off the trailer backwards. So my response to that was, well, you need to go back to basics with that horse and teach the horse the lesson in the way that's set out in the training. In the training, we teach trailer loading one foot on, one foot off, two feet on, two feet off, three feet on, three feet off, etc. What this does is it teaches the horse two really important things. One is to get on and to get off at the same time. The other is to wait for the signal to get off. We need self-carriage in everything we do, and that is self-carriage. Self-carriage is waiting for the signal to do something else. And so if you look at those videos in the training where the most important part of the trailer loading lessons is not the getting on, particularly or even the getting off really it's the it's the self carriage which is the waiting on the trailer while you do whatever you have to do i get off and i walk around the other side and i make a cup of tea but it's teaching the horse to wait for that signal to get off because horses rarely really care much about getting on the trailer they they're scared of getting off and so they rush off backwards because getting off is harder than getting on because they, they can't see where they're going and the ramps are often a bit flimsy sounding and feeling. And so, you know, it's easy to get on, but the horse, once it's on, it knows it has to get off. So they rush off because they, they want to get that over and done with. You know, they're always pretty happy when they get out, but they stick their head in the air and they rush off backwards because they want to get that done. It's like horses that pull back. It's the same thing. They're trying to get that done quickly because they know it hurts when they pull back. But once that string's broken, it doesn't hurt anymore. So they do it quickly. And it's the same with the trailer loading. So what we need to do is take that horse back to the foundation work. It hasn't got the foundation of self-carriage. And that is absolutely a foundation lesson. And what it means is that You continue to do what you've been asked to do until you're asked to do something else. So for the trailer loading horse, it had been asked to walk on and stand. It hasn't been asked to do anything else. And so the horse needs to learn to listen to the trainer or the the owner or the handler for the next cue and the next cue might be, get off or the next cue might be move your hindquarters across so I can do up the divider. It it could be anything. But what the horse isn't doing is staying in self-carriage. And that's often a good way of looking at it as well. It's not to focus on what the horse is doing wrong and this is rushing off backwards. Focus on what the horse isn't doing. So the horse isn't waiting for you to give it a cue to back up. Because what that does is it tells you what's missing. So what's missing for this horse is obedience to the cue to back up. So it it doesn't understand that it needs to wait for that cue. So when you go back to basics and re-teach trailer loading from the start, which shouldn't take very long, particularly for the horse is already happy to get on. All you're really teaching is the get off cue. So you need to be very clear about your signal to go backwards. Always really, really clear. So that's it from me today. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next podcast and happy training.